Hi, lovely, and welcome back to the podcast. Have you ever felt overwhelmed by all the things you think you should do to get healthier? What if I told you that the biggest results can actually come from the smallest tweaks? In today's episode, I'm breaking down the power of small wins, those simple, doable changes that add up to incredible progress over time. And if you're wondering ever since you turned 40, how the woman looking back at you in the mirror is actually you. And if you're continuing to Google how to lose weight in your forties and get completely overwhelmed with all the recommendations that pop up, I want you to know that you're not alone. I've been there and I know it's confusing, but after 10 years of working with clients, helping them to transform their bodies and their health after 40, I'm ready to help you too. If you want a step-by-step guide for looking and feeling like yourself again with personal recommendations for what exercises to do, what foods you should be eating, and what stressors you should be avoiding, I want you to book a free call with me. It's a limited time complimentary call where we'll spend 30 minutes together creating a roadmap designed for you so you can start building healthy habits for a better you. The link and all the information is in the show notes. I cannot wait to chat with you. Do you feel unrecognizable since hitting your 40s? Is losing those stubborn five to 10 pounds despite your best efforts a constant struggle? Are you always tired, bloated, and relying on caffeine or sugar to get you through the 3 p.m. slump? In this podcast, you're gonna find practical tools to shed weight, regain your energy, and feel like yourself again as you navigate your 40s and beyond. Hi, I'm Lara, a registered holistic nutritionist and life coach with over 10 years of experience helping women achieve their health and weight loss goals. Get ready to learn how your hormones and metabolism are shifting and be equipped with simple nutrition, exercise, and stress management tools so you can navigate peri and postmenopause with confidence and vitality. Now go grab your infused water because it's time to dive in. Let's start off with why small wins matter. Why is it important to make small changes? A few reasons. One, small wins, they boost your motivation and they keep your momentum going because they're achievable and they don't feel like a complete overhaul. What I mean by this is, when we make small changes it's easier to do it's there is less resistance to doing it so think about overhauling your diet think about cutting out all carbs or going keto or a diet that you did in the past that you found very difficult or challenging and once it's over you're like oh i don't know if i'm ever going to go back to that or you you know you're not inclined to go back to it The reason is when we make grandiose changes, it creates a lot of resistance in our brain. And I've talked about this before, that our brain moves us away from pain and towards pleasure. And when something is difficult and, you know, like doing a boot camp and you're going to go hard for five weeks and you're just going to do this very difficult thing, Well, when you do that, you might be able to get through it, but by the end of it, there's a lot of resistance built up because that thing that you did was very difficult versus, let's take working out, for example, you decide that you're going to walk every day for 15 minutes, just to walk around the block, it's 15 minutes. There's less resistance for that type of change rather than a complete overhaul and a very challenging and difficult thing. So when you have small things that you do with consistency, it creates momentum because it's doable. And also because it's such a small change, it establishes habits over time and these habits turn into routines. So if you build into your schedule a 15 minute walk, it's possible for that to increase over time and then you end up doing longer walks or possibly workouts or you decide that okay you know what I'm gonna work on my breakfast and I'm just gonna focus on breakfast that's achievable rather than 
cooking everything from scratch and making sure that you have breakfast, lunch, dinner for three weeks planned ahead. You know what I mean? There's a lot less resistance to that. So this is when I started working out, this is what I started to do. I started with small doable shifts and I started walking and it was just, you know, it was, I started small and then it worked out that I actually enjoyed it and it increased from there. But I decided that it was something that was, there was, I was really resistant to. And so I started small. So what are some changes? So let's talk about what are some changes, small changes that I get my clients to make that lead to big results. Now, before I get into, you know, the different things, I just want to say in order to make this, you know, bang for buck for you, I want you to think about your day and think about the things that you do that really move you away from the go- your goals. So is it that you are a late night eater? Is it that you um, stay up late and watch TV and you need a snack with the TV? Is it that you're not going to bed early enough and um, you know you end up snacking, but you know, we'll talk about sleep in a bit. But what is it? Is it the afternoon? You're, you're a grazer in the afternoon or you you do well all day and then the afternoon throws you off. What about your day is causing you the most problem? And start from there. So, you know, I'll give an example of a client where we knew that she was going to bed far too late. And that was her biggest issue because if she was going to bed too late, she was waking up late in the morning. Um, she wanted to work out in the morning. She had no time for it. She had a really rushed morning. It would stress her out and she would make poor choices from there on in. And so her most troublesome spot was her sleep. That was her most problematic area. And that's what we address. We started to address her sleep. We improved her quality sleep, etc. And then everything was more doable from there on end. Addressing this for you, I think, would, would be beneficial for you. So take a look at your day and think about what is the thing that's causing me most trouble and try to address that. Now, when I work with you one-on-one, when I work with my clients, this is something that I help you out with. And yeah, we we really get into the nitty gritty of your day and we address it head on. And we and and just to say that we all need a very customized approach. A diet that might work for me might not work for you. Um, a rhythm to my day that works for me might not work for you. So everything that you do has to be customized for you. And if the things that I'm saying in this podcast really speak to you, I highly encourage you, book a free 15-minute call with me. No strings attached. You can ask me any questions and we could really determine if my programs are well suited for you. So let's get into some of the things that I find are small shifts, but lead to big results. Okay, so the first one I talked a little bit about it is prioritizing sleep. Why does it matter? Why is sleep so critical? Well, good sleep isn't just for feeling rested. It affects how your body addresses your weight. So both quality and duration of sleep impact your hormones, your metabolism, and even your hunger levels. Have you ever not had a good night's sleep and then the next day you have an insatiable hunger and nothing could quench your hunger? Um, So it's hormonal. It's completely hormonal related. So when we don't sleep, generally our cortisol is higher That affects your reproductive hormones, absolutely. It also affects your hunger and satiety hormones. And you end up eating more and eating more emotionally the next day when you haven't slept. So if you're stealing from your sleep, if you're staying up late, I highly encourage you to keep that in check and address it. Next one is, I have talked about this a fair bit, prioritizing protein. Protein is 
extremely important, especially as we get older, because we are losing muscle mass. So making sure that we're getting enough protein will help slow down muscle loss. It's really important for producing hormones and also reducing cravings. There is so much research supporting that sufficient amounts of protein helps balance your blood sugar for the day and also um, causes you to actually consume less calories because it is so satiating. So I'd say aim for 20 to 30 grams, uh, minimum 30 grams per meal, 20 if you really um, can't get enough protein, a minimum of 20, but ideally 30 to 35. And this is especially important at breakfast. So very simple things that you could do is Greek yogurt, I love cottage cheese, um, eggs in the morning, a smoothie with some protein powder you can do, but just make sure that if you're using whey protein, there's also fat and fiber in that. Otherwise it does spike your blood sugar, chicken, lentils at lunch, fish or lean meats at dinner. So just make sure that you're having enough protein and it doesn't all have to be meat-based. You can have lentils with some hemp hearts and that'll give you your the protein at lunch. The other small win is really improving your hydration. So making sure that you are properly hydrated and I do not recommend that you chug gallons of water but you do need to make sure that you're drinking enough water. And if we don't drink, our body basically stops sending thirst cues to our brain because it is very stressful. So imagine being in a desert and your your brain keeps prompting you to drink, drink, drink. Well, you don't have access to water in the desert. And so that would cause your cortisol to spike really high. Instead, what your body does is if you ignore your thirst cues long enough, it stops sending you those signals. So if you're not generally a thirsty person, just start drinking. I like to have a glass of water with me all the time, wherever I go, uh, there is a bottle with me, whether it's church or to the mall, wherever I am there, I always have water with me because I want to be hydrated. I'm not chugging, I am sipping. So I highly encourage you to do that. Just drink as you go um, and it's just a nice reminder. And also um, make sure that you have electrolytes in your water. So um, if you find that you're thirsty all the time and you're drinking, you might need to add electrolytes. The final one is sneak movement into your day. Now, You don't have to run a marathon, but you do have to move more. And, you know, as we age, we do get more sedentary, especially if you're, you know, still working. A lot of us have desk jobs. Some of us have not gone back to the office. So if you look at your movement today, it probably is less than it was five years ago. So just make sure that you are, Moving, especially if you're at a desk job, little bursts of activity throughout the day can make a very significant difference. So if I walk around the block, for me, it's 15 minute walk. And if I walk three times a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, it gives me 7,500 steps. That is, you know, short spurts, but really by the end of the day, it really does add up. So I highly recommend that you build movement into your day. So after a meal is a great time because it reduces, it improves your insulin sensitivity. It helps you metabolize your carbohydrates better. It um, prevents you from gaining weight. And for some people, they might even see weight loss just by walking after a meal. So if I think back to some of my most successful clients, they're the ones who've really embraced this. They've identified that the all-in or all-out mentality is no longer serving them well. Instead, they decide to make small changes and small cumulative changes. And the progress they make, the weight loss that they experience, the health that they experience is unbelievable and it has longevity. They're doing it now. They Their body gets better and better and healthier and healthier 
instead of, you know, getting weight, gaining weight and sluggish, et cetera, and the, the common things we experience or expect to experience with age. So I highly encourage you to take what I've shared here, identify the one thing that you think you need to work on and just apply it with consistency. And I'd love to hear from you. If this resonated with you, if there's the one thing that you've identified, shoot me a quick email or leave me a comment on this podcast. I'd really love to know what it is that you took away and what's the one thing that you've decided to work on. Thank you for listening. Join me each Wednesday and Friday for a fresh episode of the Mastery Metabolism Over 40 podcast. And if you're looking for additional resources to help you navigate this peri and postmenopausal journey, head to nutritionherway.com for free recipes, resources, and a supportive community of women going through this journey just like you. And if you found this episode helpful, others will too. I would love, love, love it if you can leave a podcast review. It's truly the number one way you can thank me and it grows this show, getting this podcast in front of other women just like you who want to learn how to navigate this peri and postmenopausal journey. Signing off in love and health.